The final video in the three-part Get to Know Your Peterbilt series is the inside dashboard. I'm in our truck number eight. Truck number eight and truck number nine, as said in other videos, are identical. In operation, truck number eight has a couple of extra little doodads on it that truck number nine doesn't yet. Uh, we experimented on truck eight. So the truck you drive may or may not have all of these things, but we'll show them to you and point them out if it's not in the other trucks. The most obvious thing in truck number eight is the camera system. It has a video system that records the camera out the front window, camera out the back of the truck, and there's a camera mounted over in the corner there, and that is a camera on the driver to make sure that you stay awake all day. Uh, right now the monitor on the camera system is not working, so you can't see it, but it's actually still recording and still takes the videos every time you drive it. Uh, on the dashboard itself, we have oil pressure, we have fuel, DEF, the diesel exhaust fluid, which is part of the emission system, it must have DEF in it, as well as fuel, RPMs, speedometer, two air gauges for the two air tanks, and over here in the corner, the uh, engine temperature. Uh, does not have an amp or voltmeter on this truck. In the top center is a box called is the information center down here under the dashboard under the the cluster gauge cluster this round knob will control what shows up on the uh, information panel I normally set it at uh, the clock it's easiest for me uh, Kevin drives this truck. He likes the 24-hour clock, so it's set for 1312, which is, of course, 112 in the afternoon. Uh, you can... Settings is where you adjust the time and, and anything else. Uh, and you go down... While you're running, you can check the RPMs. If you don't like the RPM gauge, it, it'll show you RPMs. It'll show you how many miles you've driven this particular trip. If you reset it, this is the reset button right here. I've reset it back to zero, but it'll show you the miles uh, on the individual trip. Truck information, if you if you want to bring up any of these items, like trip information, you dial the trip information, and then you simply push in on the dial, and you get a whole bunch of other information. Uh, you can... Uh, and anything, if you want to know the idle information, for example, you put it on idle information, then push in on the button, and it will tell you how many hours you've idled how, and all of that. Nothing that you really need to know unless some emergency happens, but it's it's interesting stuff. And then you hit, you want go back up to exit, push in, and you're out of that section. Uh, it'll also do truck information. It'll show you uh, this... Uh, you know, it will give you what the chassis number is, serial numbers, and stuff like that. Again, nothing you need to know on a, on a regular basis, but just kind of interesting that it's all there. Uh, diagnostics. This is one thing you might find if you get an idiot light that comes on in the dashboard, and you can, you know, this will tell you when you start it up. It does a self-diagnostic, and this will tell you if it's found anything. Hope and if you. Uh, if something does show up here, you need to let the courier manager know or uh, the operations manager know so that we can get the truck in for repair. Uh, you would also get warnings uh, if it's something serious would show up on this panel or the time. And as I said, I generally just leave it on time so that I have a clock while I'm driving. To the left of the steering wheel are six buttons. The first, the middle one here turns your running lights on and off. The button to the left turns your headlights on and off. And you can hear the warning because I don't have the truck running. This is the adjuster for how bright the dashboard is. Underneath it, this is your four-way flasher button. And on this truck, 
These two buttons actually work. One are, we have a set of white floodlights on the back of the truck to help you see while you're working in the, at night. And the other is a set of yellow flashy lights, uh, warning lights on front and back. If you're working, uh, this truck was specifically for downtown Cincinnati. We pick up a lot of curbside stuff in Cincinnati and we just thought we needed more warning lights while the driver is out uh, on the streets of Cincinnati. So this is this is uh, yellow flashy lights. This is the floodlights. On the right side uh, of the steering wheel, again, this is the knob that adjusts all those things on the, on the screen on the dashboard, key and ignition. This is the fan button, uh, always leaving an automatic. If for some reason the truck seems to be overheating and the fan isn't running, or if you're sitting for a really long time, uh, you can turn the fan on, the engine fan on manually, but 99% of the time leave it on auto. It will turn itself on when it needs to. These are the two cruise control buttons. You turn the cruise control on and off with this button. This is on. And then you set it by pushing here, or you resume it by pushing here. So you do have cruise control. The trucks are now set at 75 miles an hour maximum speed. Uh, they used to be set at 65. We've upped that to 75 so that you can keep, tra keep up with traffic. Moving across the dashboard is the radio. I've never used the radio in the years I've worked for this company. Uh, you can plug your phone into the radio right here. If you have music on your phone or you have iTunes or whatever, you can play that music through the radio. But I have no idea how you do that. Ask Kevin. He knows all those things. A uh, little storage pocket, air conditioning controls. The key thing about the air conditioning controls is this button. This actually turns the air conditioning on and off. You set, you set this where you want the air to flow. If you want the air to flow out of the dashboard, that's that setting and then you turn the fan on but you're not going to have any air conditioning unless you push this button in okay that's the air conditioning button if you don't turn push that button in you don't have air conditioning the air does work sometimes moving across the dashboard this is the parking brake switch uh, you can you know set and release the parking brake this is the transmission there's no shift on the on the column, there's no shift in between. The shift down thing down here is the PTO setting. That's not the transmission. That's a transmission in a lot of trucks, but not this truck. This is the PTO settings down here. This is the transmission right here. Neutral. If you do not put your foot on the brake, it will not go into gear. So you can push drive, but if you don't have your foot on the brake, it will not shift into gear. This display will tell you whether you're in gear or not and it will be flashing if you're in drive but not in gear. So uh, make sure you put your foot on the brake first before you push it. Uh, the, the mode buttons over here, uh, there is a way, and another video will dis discuss it, that the transmission will tell you whether it's low on oil or if it needs servicing or whatever, and that's a combination of pushing the mode button and these up and down buttons. We're not gonna cover that right now. What you need to know is neutral, drive reverse the buttons over here aren't touched very often but they're they are important if you need them this the truck has four wheels two axles four sets of, of drive wheels in the back all four wheels do drive uh, but they have differentials between them so if you get in a slippery situation uh, you may have had a car at one time or another in your life where one wheel is on the ground, the other wheel is up in the air, and if you press on the gas, the only thing that happens is the wheel that's up in the air spins. It doesn't give power to the wheel on the ground. That's part of a, the differential. Uh, and that will happen on these trucks. You will get wheels spinning even though the other wheel has traction. To help in that, you have two buttons. First of all, this button, if you push it in, it will lock the wheels side to side so that if one wheel has traction and the other wheel doesn't then uh, now both wheels are forced to have traction because they're locked together similarly this one 
locks the front axle and back axle. So if you get really stuck and you can't and you're in ice or you're in snow, first thing you would do is push this button, which would lock the wheels side to side, and that should give you enough traction to get going. If it doesn't, push this button, that will lock the wheels front and back. If that doesn't do it, call a tow truck. That's about your only other choice. So uh, normally you never touch these. Just leave them in the off position. You never touch them. But if you are stuck, those are ways to possibly get you out. Uh, the next two switches down. This button over here says PTO. It is not hooked up. Our PTO system is down here between the seats. This is the button that turns the PTO on and off. This button on the dashboard that's labeled PTO does nothing, so ignore that. This button is the air suspension dump. It's possible that if you're uh, parked at an angle and the front of the truck is lower than the back of the truck, the back of the truck is sticking up in the air. Well, if the back of the truck is sticking up in the air, you may not be able to hook the carts on the tipper because the back of the truck is sticking up so high in the air. If that happens, if you can't get the carts on the air truck because the front of the truck is kind of in a nose down situation on a hill or in a driveway headed down, push this button. That will blow the air, and you hear the warning, that will let the air out of the airbags in the back, and that will lower the back of the truck down a couple of inches and should help you. You heard the alarm go off. You cannot drive with the airbags down, but you'll hear the alarm go off, so you'll remember to, to turn it back on. Underneath that, this is the uh, regen switch, regeneration, which is part of the emissions control system. It is completely automatic. You don't have to do a thing. Just leave it in the middle position, neither on nor off. Do not turn it off, because if you turn it off, the truck's emissions will not operate, and you'll carbon up the engine, and you'll cause all sorts of problems. You can manually start a regeneration cycle, an emissions control cycle. There is no reason for the driver to do that. So just leave it in the middle position, neither off nor on. Just leave it in the middle. It's automatic. It will do everything itself. The next switch over is the Jake brake, C brake, pack brake, engine brake, whatever you've learned to call it. This is the engine brake or the Jake brake switch. Uh, we don't do enough hills or interstate driving to really need the Jake brake, but the truck is equipped with one. But again, leave it off most. And finally over here, I've had recording issues there, hope I can splice this together, is a spare switch. It does absolutely nothing. It says spare. It does nothing. Maybe someday we'll have lights or something to hook up to that. Uh, but that does absolutely nothing. So that's your inside tour of the Peterbilt dashboard, headlight, uh, four-way flasher switches here, cruise control here, the radio air conditioning controls down there and these buttons over here you don't generally worry about transmission of course you do every day and it's right there that's your Peterbilt